Why are you running in like that? What's wrong with you? What's the rush? Hello everyone, welcome to episode 52. Just before we start, I need to just clear something up. So what's the big news? Why are you running in like that? A party? Tonight, a party. And I've been invited, we've been, we have been invited to a party. I'm not a big party person. I don't, I don't really like people, you know? I don't need to make friends, all right? I, I've got friends, I've got, I've got dead Ted. Hi Ted. He's my friend. He's just a ping pong ball wrapped up in toilet. Shh, eat it. Don't don't let me hear you say that. Whose party is it? Your friends, okay. Well, your friends are weird. I'm going to be honest. They're, they're a little bit creepy. Your friends. It's not one of those weird parties, is it, that you go to? Okay, Halloween party, and I need to make a mask. I guess today we're making a mask. Um. All right. So I guess I have to make a mask. I, I bought this one in Poundland uh, for a pound. Uh, and this is like, you know, the mask people wear on the outside. But I wear that on the inside, you know, the big smiley mask, you know, you know what I mean. And I bought this one too, because I think, you know, I might try two different designs and see which one I like. Now I went out and bought these specifically for this video. And then I kind of realized that, uh, hold on a second, last year, last Halloween episode, I think I already bought these. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. I already bought these masks, so now I have four masks. Uh, but I'm only making two, so, um, you know. So it's been a while since I've done a sketch on video, and people tend to like that, and I quite enjoy doing it too. It's, uh, it helps me come up with a clear idea. Uh, so let's design some masks. So I'm going to go with eight doodles here, just eight random masks and just see which one I like. You know, I have no real clear idea in my head. This is kind of like a doodle grid, like an idea grid thing. I, I did a video about this a while ago. I, I might stick a link up here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, want to, I want to do something gory, maybe something a bit apocalyptic, something a bit, you know, futuristic. I don't know, I'm not really sure yet, uh, but I have two masks. So let's see, let's just, uh, let's just doodle. So as you can see, the same sort of design keeps reoccurring us because I like a piece and I use it on the next doodle and then I'll take that piece and use it on the next and it kind of, you know, distills down to what I want to make. Now I kind of want to make some kind of zombie slash mutant with bits of metal sticking its face together, you know, just something quite gory and, uh, you know, disturbing. And I also want to make this weird kind of wire wire tentacle monster with like it looks like a bum hole for a mouth but it's not but just some weird kind of wire face it's weird yeah I, I can't explain it i just feel like that might be a cool mask um don't judge me 
Of course, I need to remind myself that you come here for the weirdness. Uh, anyone who's seen my stuff before knows it's weird, and I'm, I'm assuming you like that kind of thing, because you're weird, like me. Um, or maybe you've never seen my channel before, and you've just stumbled across this video. Well, it's a Halloween special, you're in for a treat. Uh, consider subscribing. My mind's gone blank, I'm trying to think of reasons why you should. Um, I mean, you know, they're nice drawings, isn't it? Quite nice, I coloured them in for you. Uh, that's got to be worth a sub, you know. Click. So I went out and bought this polystyrene head to kind of model my mask, uh, you know, so it could hold it in place. And then I realized it's too light and it keeps falling over, so I had to weight the bottom. I should have just used my son, um, but he wouldn't sit still long enough for me to sand his face. But, you know, you've got to sand this plastic because it's that horrible shiny stuff that nothing sticks to. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just here, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you want to make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go, there's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go, you have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now I've made plenty of websites in the past and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website builder I've ever used. It's uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this, this took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you wanna make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on, uh, there you go. So as a little bit of a Halloween tradition on this channel, I'm gonna use some toilet rot. That's, that's not that's not what you think it is, that's just paint. Uh, I'm gonna use PVA glue mixed with toilet roll and a bit of water. Uh, I used this last Halloween episode to make my weird uh, gory skulls. I'm thinking of doing the same sort of technique here. So I can hear, I can hear, you're like, Bill, why don't you just use some green stuff, some epoxy putty, some cosplay even, you know, uh, some super sculpey. I mean, I mean, one, it would melt in the oven, uh, the mask, but that's not the point. I did consider that. But no, the point of my channel is that it's accessible. Everyone can get hold of PVA glue and toilet roll, hopefully. I mean, there was a time when you couldn't get hold of toilet roll, uh, but, you know, most people can get hold of this stuff. And I'm quite proud that my channel is quite accessible. I tend to use a lot of junk, a lot of really cheap items from like Dollar Trees and Pound Stores and places like that. And you know, it's all about being cheap and accessible. Mainly cheap. Probably gonna regret cutting that nose off. Um, but anyway, I wanna fill these holes up. Um, with some EVA foam. I'm gonna use EVA foam a lot in this uh, video. Like I said, with cheap items, EVA foam is dirt cheap. You can find it in craft stores, like normally a pack of 50 sheets, uh, which will last you forever. So use a brush to kind of uh, soften this down with a bit of water and PVA glue. Kind of try and smooth it out as much as possible. So it's looking pretty rough at the moment, but this is my first layer. I'm gonna sculpt into this later. Uh, I'm gonna make a little polystyrene eyeball. Now, I'm not sure where I got this little polystyrene ball from, but uh, you can use a ping pong ball, you can use anything. But yeah, that's pretty rough, but I'm gonna leave that to dry. So while that one's drying, I'm gonna start making my Lovecraftian kind of weird tentacle mask. It's gonna be rusty wires going into this hole in the middle of the face. It's really weird, I know, stick with me. It's gonna look pretty good, I'm sure. Uh, I'm gonna use these plastic conduit wires. So before I get too carried away, I want to think of eye sockets. Now these are lids from baby food pouches. Uh, they're really good. They've got a really cool design on them and uh, they seem to be perfect for what I need. So this conduit wire stuff is pretty hard to handle. You need to kind of stretch it out like a, you know like when you're blowing up balloons, you need to stretch them out a bit. That's kind of what I do with these. I just give them a good stretch.
So this is what I have so far. Now I use big conduit cables first, then the medium ones, and now I'm gonna use this uh, finer garden wire. Now it's kind of like when you gravel a path, like you want to put the big rocks at the bottom, the medium rocks on top of that, then the finer rocks on top of that, and it all kind of levels out. Same sort of thing with these wires. That's how I kind of create an organic smoothness. It's not really smooth, but you know, you know what I mean. So, several hours later, uh, I do leave this stuff to dry in an airing cupboard because it takes forever to dry. That's the one downside to using toilet roll and PVA glue. Uh, but you know, a tip is use less water and more PVA glue, it dries quicker. So I'm working into this, I'm adding toilet roll, removing stuff, and I'm trying to get it away from the Bogdanov look at the moment. It's, yeah, it's not really what I want. Uh, this chin may be a problem. So I have these polystyrene balls. Uh, I'm not sure why I have them, to be honest. Um, but you could get these in like a bean bag. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna use them as like little warts and spots and just, just generic texture. I'm gonna PVA glue that stuff in there. So I'm trying to be as gory and disgusting as possible because sometimes that's fun, you know, especially this time of year. Try and be as gory and disgusting. No, I mean, not in real life. I mean, with your masks and your costumes and crafts and stuff. But you know, uh, this chin, uh, I cannot deal with this. This chin has to go, I'm sorry. I mean, I think that's much better. Comment down below. Uh, less Bogdanov, you know. I want this thing to be creepy, but not that creepy. Uh, I'm gonna make teeth, and I'm not sure what kind of teeth I want. I'm thinking needle teeth with kebab skewers and cocktail sticks, and maybe these things. I'm not sure what they're for, uh, but I have a lot of them. And I'm gonna make rows and rows of sharp little teeth, because, you know, sharp teeth are creepy. So I don't know about you, but I always get to this point in the build, take a look, and I think, is this a bit shit? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to stick at it. So it's going to be you, your friends, uh, anyone else I don't know about. It's just a perfectly innocent Halloween pie. Can I bring someone with me? I know you're bringing me, but can I bring someone? You know, someone I actually like, someone who I want to talk to. Who? Well, Ted. You want to come, Ted? Um, he said yes. Um, he'll come. Well, why not? So, sorry, one minute, Ted. Why not? Because he's a ping pong ball wrapped up in toilet. I said, don't say that. You're going to really, <laughs> he's, you know what cat's like, Ted. He's just, he's a bit of used toilet roll around a ping. He didn't. <laughs> calm down, Ted, calm down. We d I won't bring him, okay? I better finish making the mask anyway. Um, uh. So have I ever told you how much I love EVA foam? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So I, I won't go on about it then. Have I ever told you about my hole punch collection? Yeah, okay. Um, I love EVA foam and hole punches. So I'm going to use this EVA foam to act as kind of like metal plate stitches, uh, kind of holding this guy's face together. Um, pretty gruesome. <laughs> I'm quite liking that at the moment, but I think it needs some rivets. Uh, this is one of my boxes for the bits. I like to call them bits boxes because they're boxes for the bits. Um, yeah. So I'm going to use these hemispherical rhinestone things as bolts. Now I imagine the Bogdanovs would have to do this at some point just to keep their faces together. I mean, are they still alive? So I'm going to use this Mod Podge and acrylic paint and combine it together to make a potion that's going to seal the evil in this marsh, you know, just kind of seal it in there you know, and uh, keep the moisture out. So I'm not sure if I like this mask yet, I will persist. And this mask I'm going to take outside and prime with spray paint, uh, just like that. There you go, that's quite handy. So this is a cabochon, uh, and these are cabochons. I learned about cabochons from my friend, the craftsman, Steady Crafting. I'm sure you've heard of him. So painting glass is a pain in the bottom. Uh, but I was told if I use nail varnish, uh, this is UV nail varnish, you use a UV light to cure it, uh, and it will stick to the glass. So that's what I'm gonna try. I bought this cheap set off of Amazon. Just don't tell my wife. 
So be sure to paint on the flat side, the side that's not going to be exposed. And uh, well, yeah, let's give it a go. The, you know, the pigmentation doesn't look great. It looks a bit snotty, to be honest. But it's quite bright and uh, luminous, which is quite good. I'm going to go for some yellow in the middle and try and get some sort of gradient. And when happy, use your little, uh, you know, your evidence torch to kind of just cure it like that. There we go. And that looks pretty good to me. I really like the look of that. It looks kind of like it's glowing. I mean, I'm sure we could do better, but that would do for now. So I made a few more and uh, well, we'll see what we do with these later. So I Cenafil primed this mask uh, with a black spray paint and then white from above uh, and that's why it's got that gradient. Now I want to keep that gradient, uh, it's easier to kind of just uh, glaze over the top like this uh, than add it in later. I also primed this one with a bit of a grey spray paint, uh, the black was just a little bit too dark and I'm just going to go with some weird disgusting combinations of colours. I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to wash over this. So, you can see there, there's a variation of tone, and that's just because I glazed over the Xenophil highlight. It's a, a really good technique, and it's really easy to accomplish. So it, it makes it look like I can paint. I mean, let's be honest. So, for the rusty wire face mask, I'm just going to go for the Bill Standard. Basically, just different variations of rust tones. I tried to make it more complicated than it needed to be in my head. You know, I thought, you know, let's try and make this look really complex and deep. But this is the look I was going for, really. I mean, it's a rusty wire face mask. And that's exactly what it looks like. So it turns out the Bogdanov twins are dead. Uh, well, apologies to uh, any Bogdanov fans out there. Um, I mean, this is almost like a tribute to them, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's quite sad, really, but I guess this is the time of year when, you know, they may come back, you know, they might come back for Halloween night, you know? Um, I mean, can you imagine how terrifying that is, a Bogdanov zombie coming for you? That's got to be one of the most terrifying things I could ever think of. Anyway, I went kind of crazy with a paint scheme on this. I just basically just used lots of different colours and just kind of mixed them, like you know, kind of wet blended, I believe the technical term is, uh, and just went for it, you know, and it was quite fun, I'm going to be honest. Now I know I always complain about the painting part, I was actually quite enjoying myself here. This was a, a nice big scale thing to paint and just, I was just wet blending like crazy, you know. I probably wet blended too much, got carried away and it got a little bit too wet. Um, I've never had that problem before, honest. So I primed all the teeth and the eyeball white so I could stain them later. So that was a real thunder strike that just happened just out the back of the house and it shook the whole house. I could feel the roof rattling and it scared the absolute crap out of me. I thought I should just let you know a bit of trivia. Um, it's funny that I've been using like fake thunder strike sounds throughout this whole episode and actually just got a real one. And that was the only one. There wasn't a storm. It was just one thunderbolt. That was it. I think someone's trying to tell me something. Or it may be just because it's a Halloween episode. Anyway, I thought that was quite fun for you to, uh, you know, a bit of trivia for you. Anyway, let's carry on, shall we? So, as tradition with this channel, you know, uh, every Halloween I use tissue paper and PVA glue. Also, it's a cursed episode on Halloween. Uh, uh, not so bad as last year, but this year I discovered a wasp nest up in the attic and wasps keep flying into my workshop and attacking me. Uh, I keep running out, obviously, but I need to get it finished. So I decided to use what I had around me. I have that accelerant for super glue in the spray bottle. Do you remember I used it before and I talked about how bad it is for you. So I figured, you know, this might put this wasp off. You know, the smell might be just horrible enough that it won't want to come over. But, um, you know, it just dropped dead straight away out of the sky. Boom. Um, and then all its friends came along because, you know, wasps are like the mafia. You can't just kill one and get away with it. So I found these weird gummy ghost lights in the pound shop and the light has this little kind of on and off switch which I quite like. Um, so I think I'm going to just take the little gummy ghosts and I don't know, feed them to the kids or something. 
Turns out they're not edible, but uh, you know, it's not my problem. Time to glue down the cabochons. They fit perfectly in these little sockets. It was really satisfying to just slot them in. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, lights. I mean, this mask is probably gonna stink of hot glue if I ever stick it on, but it's all right. I think this is about as neat as I can get it. This is neat enough for me. Uh, just hot glue everything on the inside of the mask. There's still enough room for my face, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that looks later. So back in the day, to make something look gory in a movie, a horror movie, they would use uh, lubricant, KY jelly, stuff like that to make the stuff glisten and reflect the light. I mean, I'm not gonna stick lubricant all over my mask. Um, not yet, anyway. But I'm using some UV resin. So, to finish off these masks, I wanna use an oil wash. Uh, basically, it's white spirit mixed with brown oil paint. So using it on this rusty wire face mask is fine, uh, but now I've decided to use it on my, you know, gory one. I first started with the metal bits and now I've decided to stick it all over the thing because that's what Bill does. Bill does stupid things. Uh, I don't think I've ruined it. I can wipe it away with sponges like this. Uh, we're just gonna have to see. Uh, I don't think I've ruined it. So here we are, two, two masks. I've got a choice. I think I'm gonna go for this one, but, um, yeah, I wasn't too sure about this one, you know, throughout the video. But it actually looks pretty cool, pretty gory. It kind of scares my, my son and my wife, so that's good, isn't it? But I think I'm going to wear this one, I think. Um, get those lights on. What are you wearing, Cat? So, Cat, what do you think? I'm thinking this one, yeah? What do you mean it's not sexy enough? You didn't say sexy. Where's your mask? <sighs> hmm, I, I might just stay in, actually. I think I'm just gonna stay in. Happy Halloween, everyone. So there we go, there is my Bogdanov twin tribute mask. Um, I actually quite like it now, I didn't like it to begin with, it was really fun to paint and I think the oil wash actually added to it. So here is the rusty wire face, Lovecraftian horror mask thing uh, with lights. Uh, this this thing I think looks pretty cool. It's gonna look pretty good on my wall. Uh, one of my patrons said it kind of looks like the butt face from Preacher. I can see that. Uh, but anyway, let me know which mask you like best in the comments down below. And thank you patrons uh, for supporting me. As per usual, there will be a horror movie uh, marathon on my Discord channel for patrons and everyone else actually. So if you wanna come along, there's a link down below. Uh, and I'll see